6, episode 4, Arrow of the Wolf, we delve into Young Ian's past and the tragic story behind why he left the Mohawk. Meanwhile, Marva gets close to Claire as her new apprentice, and Jamie learns about the Cherokee's devastating future. The Hour of the Wolves um, was so good. It was so central on Young Ian. What did you make of it? I absolutely love this episode, and I thought it was a very emotional one as well. It really was. And we are so lucky because we're actually being joined by the man of the hour himself, John Bell, for Outlander Insider. Perfect that we have you because it is um, Young Ian's big week where we find out what went down with him and the Mohawk and there's a lot of flashbacks. So, I mean, how excited were you to find out that that was in this season? Oh, I was like over the moon to hear that there was going to be a young Ian focused episode that we're finally going to get to like tell this story, unravel all these mysteries that have only been hinted at in the past. I mean, I, from the books, I knew what was going to happen, but I didn't know whether we were going to just get into it or not. So when I sat down with with Matt, Matt Robertson was like, he was like, we're going to do an episode basically dedicated to young Ian's time with the Mohawk, I was like, yes, perfect. <laughs> Something to sink my teeth into. It's such an emotional episode. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, how was it getting into that into that frame of mind? Um, it was quite funny because it was actually, that was the last episode we shot because we had to, of course, get right. all the actors who were from Canada to help fill out the Mohawk Cherokee trading posts and tell those stories. So there was a bit of like shoot exhaustion by the end. I remember <laughs> being like, oh my God, ready to do and like, no, actually you're going to be the lead now. I was like, oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, but it, but it was great. I mean, it was again, something that I could really sink my teeth into. It was like, it's a whole season in an episode really. Cause we yeah. tell the story from start to finish from, you know, uh, finished starting from season four and taking him through this journey to kind of understand where he was at the end of season five and now in season six. So yeah, it was great. I really, really loved it. And working with Morgan and again, Braden from back in season uh, four, at the end of season four, um, was just fabulous. We, we really connected as a little team um, and just had a great time. Yeah. We actually all got tattoos at the end of it. Uh, really? What? What's tattoos. your tattoo? It's yeah. like a little, it's a little wolf on my hip, a little oh, I love that. single drawing line wolf that's on my hip. So I'll always have a little memory on me of, oh. of the hour of the wolf. Really <laughs> that's cool. so nice. That's like Lord of the Rings when they all got the Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a dragon on the other one for the Hobbit. So it's like oh, my wolf that's so and my cool. dragon. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I know, makeup artists are gonna hate me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In this episode, obviously we finally got to find out a lot more about Ian's wife. But do you think, you know, having seen that outcome, that we might see Ian find love again? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I mean, there's certainly a lot of, uh, of a romance or something building between Ian and Malva. Yeah, uh, we clocked that. We're yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a little, there's a little mm -hmm going on there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I have hopes. I mean, Ian is a character that is full of love uh, for his family, for for his wolf um you know for for the for the the, the his mohawk family as well so there's a lot out there for ian to give and you know he's just had a bit of a bad run of it you know and i mean like i've noticed um especially in the last few episodes how great like the show really does examine um, mental health especially male mental health like with mm. your character and like fergus and roger i mean what's your take on that i think it's amazing like i mean you've got men sharing their feelings on screen not afraid to be vulnerable with each other which is something that is so important to share and talk about um and you know that's what outlander has always done so well uh you know so i'm fully supportive of, of that in the show um and to think as well that these are characters living in a different time you know what 1700s you know where macho and masculinity was you know you were the top there so yeah for that to be broken down in such an interesting way, it's great as actors. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of that part of the show. One of the uh, standout moments in this episode was definitely when Ian performs his song. What was it like to get to sing during this episode? Was it scary or exciting? Or I'm, I'm glad you said standout could be taken in two different ways. I no, don't know. No, <laughs> this moment. It was a nice emotional moment for Ian. Yeah, yeah, I was probably the most nervous about doing that 
than anything else in that episode because I'm, I'm not really <laughs> a singer. Um, my wonderful friend, uh, singing coach Danusha, she kind of coached me through it a wee bit. Um, but yeah, it was it was fun. That day was, that was the last ever scene, I think. No, 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 the last, last one was actually the first one of the episode, which is Young Ian's transformation. Ooh, we see it right. back in season four, Ian, and they go through all the the, the ritual to, to turn him into a mohawk. Um, and so that was then the second last scene. So we're all in quite like a jolly mood, you know, the churro <laughs> truck was in. So <laughs> it was like, we're all in a good mood. And I was like, oh, well, I'll give that a go. Let's have a wee sing song, why not? And I mean, speaking of um, the Young Ian's transformation into like one of the, Mohawk. I mean, what's the process there for the costume? Because I mean, it looks amazing. You, it, but it must be challenging to do. Yeah, it was a really challenging sequence actually, and it was also because it's the last one. We were up against the clock, mm. so there was a bit of panic of everyone. Like, is this going to work? Is this, you know, what? Wow, trying to make it work. Trying to figure it out on the go. Um, turned out great. I mean, I had never had any doubt. You're amazing at the the language as well. Like it, like oh, it's God, so impressive. Yeah. I mean, do you have a you have a coach for that? Yeah, we um we actually uh, of the of the Mohawk Nation, we have uh, elders there that are on hand to translate and uh, send voice notes or breakdowns of of what we need to be said. You know. Yeah. Um. So to have that resource and be able to talk to them uh, is such a privilege. Um, what can we expect coming up? Because you know we're 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 in it now. We're at episode four. I mean, there's got to be some things that are going to cause some f fan Twitter meltdowns. Yeah, totally. It's going to be it's going to be very exciting. I can't wait to see how this turns out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think what to expect coming up. I mean, as you can see, young Ian is really kind of becoming Jamie's right hand man. Like, if he needs a job done. Young Ian's on the case. If he needs a deer hunted, Young Ian's on the case. So he's going to be there at his uncle's side, but also ready to challenge him if needs be. Um, but you'll just see, I think, the core Frasers really come together as the world around them turns against them. Um, so yeah, we'll wait and see. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Outlander Insider. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next week. Bye.